Hey everybody, it's Luke with Figure Me Out, back again, and today we've got the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Harry Potter action figure to take a look at. Taking a look at the packaging, here's the front, we've got the side there, we've got a little bit of uh, some words and stuff, I don't know if that actually says anything, maybe if you read really close. On the back we've got the other figures in the line, we've got Voldemort, who we'll also talk about, we've got Harry, we've got Hermione and Ron, and then a Buckbeak up there, which is pretty cool. These are McFarlane toys. Uh, on the other side, we've got more of that same. On the bottom, we've got some words and stuff. And on the top, we've just got like a little window in to see Mr. Potter's head. So let's go ahead and crack this thing open and we'll take a closer look. Here we are at the light box and taking a closer look at some of the accessories. First off, we have this awesome Patronus. Um, it's the uh, half stag. If you take the antlers off, which you can do, uh, it looks more like a doe, which I mean, maybe down the road, we'll get a snake figure and maybe that'll be his Patronus. I don't know, that'd be kind of cool. But uh, anyway, it's uh, it's very well sculpted. Uh, it's just that translucent plastic looks really good. Whenever you put some light up to it, it also looks really good. We'll have some cool photos of that, hopefully at the end here. Uh, the other accessories we came with uh, were stand related. So we've got these two clips. I, I don't know what these are. Um, I've, I've tried figuring it out and I, I, I'm at a loss. I have no clue. I'm guessing it's something to do with the, the base stand, which is this right here. Um, but I don't know how they would, it almost looks like they should clip on back here or something, but I, maybe it's to help it stand up. I, I don't, I don't know, because that's not very, I don't know. If anybody knows, leave me a comment let me know. Uh, stand's pretty cool. It says here, Potter, so that's fun. So there is a hole where this rod is supposed to be able to plug into. I have not been able to get mine in there. I'm probably going to have to heat it up and uh, put in some hot water or something to get it on there, because you can feel it kind of wants to go, but I don't want to... Well, and I say that, and I may have just, I just did it. I made a liar out of myself. So yeah, it plugs into the bottom there, and that looks that looks pretty good. Then you can get a Patronus on the stand. So we'll take that out. And uh, the other accessory that we get, obviously, is Harry's wand. Uh, so that's that's fine. Not too much going on there. Uh, black and brown. I think it's cast in brown. Got a little black paint on it. Talking about Harry himself, though. And uh, pretty good, man. Uh, there's a lot to like here. There's, uh, you know, it's McFarland Toys. And you know what you're getting with McFarlane Toys is you're getting some, some really cool, really good sculpt work, um, some weird articulation and some weird, weird stuff going on. So, but yeah, the, the paint and everything looks fine. It's uh, Daniel Radcliffe enough. That looks okay. Um, do check whenever you go to get these because some of them have a lot of blush on there. It looks like he's wearing makeup or something. Um, mine, I got one that didn't have that so much and didn't have the glasses bent. That's the other thing. The glasses tend to bend in the package, I guess. Um, you can see the scar up there looks pretty good. Face sculpt is, I mean, close enough. Close enough for that. Um, you know, Daniel Radcliffe, what, five, six years ago now? Maybe more. If more than that, then I'm going to feel really old. Um, but anyway, yeah, jacket looks good. Got a nice wash on it. Um, got this weird articulation in the shoulders. We'll get to that here in a bit. Um, and the, uh, the arm does tend to want to pop off on mine. But uh, pretty, you know, pretty good sculpt. Overall, the jeans look really, you know, look really good. The shirt underneath, the hoodie and everything, that looks really good. Um, jeans look fine. Uh, the ankles are a little weird. They look a little petite, and so do the feet, uh, just compared to the rest of the pants. I wish that the pants had continued down a little bit further. Um, but, you know, what can you do? Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and get him out of here, and we'll talk about some articulation. And talking about articulation, uh, like I said, not in this one, not really any articulation. You can turn those antlers, but I don't know why you'd really want to. Um, I guess just to get a different take on that, but not really much articulation going on in the Patronus there. As far as Harry's concerned, he can look up a little bit, he can look down a little bit, he can look side to side. There is a little bit of tilt in the neck, and it does do a full rotation if you really, really want it to. At the shoulders, the arms rotate fully. They come out, um, and again, my arm keeps wanting to pop off, but they come out pretty far, so that's cool. Uh, you do have an upper uh, bicep swivel. You've got a double jointed elbow that comes in all the way, and if you can not pop the arm off doing that, it's even better. Well, there we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> all the way. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, at the wrist, the articulation is kind of weird. Um, it's got a ball and a hinge, which is nice because you can swivel it so you can do up and down or you can do side to side. Um, the weird thing though is that it's it's in the jacket, so that's, that's kind of odd. Um, one other thing to mention about the articulation point at the top here, there is this floating ring piece around the shoulder that kind of hides the joint. I did take those off at one point just to see what that would look like. And it looks about the same. I mean, not much of a difference to me, but you can see like where the arm hits the jacket before it gets into the jacket, that ring just kind of 
you know, helps with that, which is kind of a weird thing, but it works, so I like it. Anyway, it's at the uh, waist, crunches forward, not very much. Crunches back, not really at all. Side to side, there's not really, there's not really much up there except for a rotation, if I'm, if I'm being honest. I mean, you can kind of get it, but the jacket and everything else inhibits that pretty hard, so you're not really getting much of anything except maybe the slightest amount. I mean, just not worth mentioning, though. Anyway, hips come out pretty darn far, Mo more than most Marvel Legends, so that's pretty cool. Um, no thigh swivel. I really wish they'd put a thigh swivel on these things, just because that would help out so much with posing, but hey, what can you do? Uh, so not really much of a thigh swivel, if any at all. Double jointed knees come in pretty much all the way, so that's awesome. And then at the ankles, kind of same thing. So they move down, they move up, and you can rotate that and get it side to side, so you can get some pretty crazy ankle pivot in there. Uh, at the end of the toe, there is a little bit of articulation there as well. For size comparison, here he is next to Lord Voldemort and then Nagini. And I think he scales pretty well there, you know. Nagini's a giant snake and Voldemort should be a little taller because he's a full grown adult and I think he was still a teenager in that movie, so that looks pretty good. Here he is next to a few other uh, action figures. We've got some Marvel Legends. We've got the Sunfire Body, the Bucky Cap, and the Hyperion. And you can see he's more of a seven inch scale because he's taller than the Bucky Cap, um, but not quite as big as Hyperion, especially bulk wise. Finally, here he is next to the Master Spider-Man, the Obi-Wan from the Star Wars Black series, the uh, McFarlane Fortnite Skull Trooper, and you can see he's more of a 7-inch scale there, and the Mezco 112th Collective Iron Man. Just for fun, here he is next to a few other McFarlane figures. We've got Jon Snow, Night King, and Wildcard, and uh, I definitely think they're all over the place with their scales. Uh, I think Harry's more of a 7-inch scale, um, whereas these are more of a 6, and that's more of a who knows what, 7-8. I don't know. So that's it. That's the Harry Potter from the new McFarlane Toys uh, wave of figures. And uh, one other thing to note, the back of the packaging had the uh, undesirable number one poster. So that's kind of fun. They've, they've come with cool uh, background packaging. But uh, overall, not not bad. Not, not great. Just kind of, you know, it's McFarlane Toys, so you know what you're kind of expecting. The articulation's kind of wonky. It's a little different. The sculpt is really great. The paint is really great. Uh, I just wish they could figure out the articulation completely, you know? But uh, overall, <clears throat> happy to have it. I like Harry Potter. It's a good property. This is a pretty decent figure. I've had fun with him, so I can't complain. But uh, what would you guys think? Hit like, hit subscribe. Check me out over on Instagram, Luke underscore figure me out at Instagram.com. We'll have some photos of this guy. Go back in and check out some of my other videos. We've got a lot of good stuff on the channel, and uh, we're going to keep trying to post more. And uh, let me know what you guys think. Until we meet again, happy collecting. Let's <laughs> go.